May the Lord richly bless each of you very, very much for your diligence, your commitment, your trust in God. Let that continue to grow. Let it, because we have the, uh, the turn off and tor- or turn off uh, a spigot whether it's going to grow or not. We have that choice. We have that privilege, that prerogative, that authority as sentient beings on the planet Earth in God's big universe. We have that power to do that. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 17. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we honor you tonight, magnify you for your loving kindness and mercy towards us. Thank you, Father, for the worship, the privilege of worship and serving and magnifying you in this hour. Thank you for answered prayer, for the benefit, blessing, and promises that we experience all the time because you're faithful and your word is forever settled. Thank you, Lord, for each one that's here tonight. We pray a special blessing of encouragement that we be strengthened in your power and your love and grace and that we take the opportunity of your offer tonight to draw closer to you, to know you more and more, that we stand true and faithful to your purpose. Would you guide my words this evening, that we hear truth and are convinced by your spirit that we draw closer to you and serve you with honor and joy. Thank you for your benefit. Thank you for your promise. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer, for all that you're doing in our hearts and lives, and all to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Acts chapter 17, verse 24. <clears throat> Hallelujah. God that made the world and all things therein. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. I don't know why this come to mind, but I'm going to mention it. Be cautious if you're prone to say, God, you've got to. God, you're going to have to. Be cautious with approaching him with such verbiage. He's the one that made the universe, the heavens. I'm going to read that again. God that made the world and all that things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. He don't dwell there. He don't dwell there. He dwells in a special place, an anointed, appointed place. It goes on to say, Neither is worshipped with men's hands. How do we worship God? In spirit and in truth. There's nothing that we can do physically that would attain or a claim of any God's glory and worship. Oh, we function in our body, but it comes from our heart. It comes from the things that we say and serve Him by. But it's nothing that we come up, we don't create worship. We don't create the things that will promote His glory and splendor. Amen. It says, neither is worshiped with men's hands as though He needed anything. God does not need anything. We hear people say from time to time, oh, he's gone to be with the Lord. He needed him here, uh, there to do this. And so, no, no, he don't need you, nothing. (laughs) He's all sufficient. He's all knowing, all powerful, and all present. He needs nothing. He's the provider of everything. He has everything. He is love. He is grace. He is mercy. He is all these things. He don't have any need. Now, there's desires that he has in his plan that he wants his plan to work out with whosoever will. And we know that whosoever will is not going to be whosoever will because some folks just are going to say no. Some folks are going to back up and say, I'm not interested, or whatever else that they may say or do. But God doesn't need any of us. We're his creation for his glory and for his splendor and for his purpose. Now, we understand that certain things, innuendos, and then we try to explain and say certain things we understand. But we need to go by the word of God, don't we? That's what we need. The scripture says, uh, Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. This is why he don't need anything. He's the one that's giving. He's the one that has the possession to give to those who they are in need. Anybody in need tonight? I'm in need, and you are too. Well, sometimes we don't want to express that or let anybody know that we're in any kind of position of need, but we are, every one of us. Maybe a little more at some places and some, sometimes than others. Maybe more so with some people than others on occasion. Uh, that comes and goes. But we are a needy people, and that's not a derogatory thing. That's a fact. 
<clears throat> the biggest reason why we're in need of him is because we're still in this carnal body. Anybody in a carnal body tonight? Every one of us are. We need his help. We need his direction. We need his correction. We need his counsel. We need his wisdom and knowledge and everything about his plan for us through Jesus Christ. We're the one that's in need. He don't need anything. He's a provider. He's the one that is life. He's the one that is love. He's the one that is holy. We need all of his attributes in us. And the problem is we want to be conflicting. We offer excuse, schedule, so-and-so, weather, flat tire, too many chickens, whatever. We offer excuses to avoid God's purpose and plan be developed in us. Let's move along or I'll be preaching a message longer than I intended. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined, hath determined the times before appointed. God knows when you're going to be born. God knows when you're going to die. It's an appointment. It's appointed to man wants to die. Isn't that right? After that, the judgment. So he knows all things. He doesn't need somebody to counsel him. He don't need anybody to build a tabernacle for him. We, he don't need anybody to come in and minister because he's in need, That because he's in lack. He don't need anything. That's not a selfish thing. That's not an arrogant thing. He's just that big and good and glorious. Hallelujah. <clears throat> hath made of all one blood nation of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations. That they should seek the Lord, if happily, or should by and by, they might feel after Him. Anybody seek the Lord? You know what that means? Anybody look for Him? Anybody understand that you don't have Him, that you look for, you desire Him, you seek Him? We understand that. He's provided opportunity through Jesus Christ that we can find Him. He that seek the Lord, if happily, they might feel after Him and find Him, though He be not far from every one of us. Isn't it amazing? And some of us, maybe all of us are guilty at least a little bit. We just look and look and search and search through life day after day, week after week, trying to find something to satisfy, help us get by. We're looking for the wrong thing. Amen. Those kind of experiences are like a bottle rocket. Spop, it's over. It's over. But Jesus Christ will provide life abundant and glorious and eternal, that, with, that if we'll invest in Him, believe in Him, trust in Him, and follow Him, blessings will flow more than what you really can understand. For in Him we live and move and have our being. The question was asked one time, who shall I say that sent me? Here's the answer. Tell them, I am sent you. That's it. I am. That's kind of what this is meaning right here. Have our being. We are. God has created us. He's delivered us through Jesus Christ. We are. We live and move and have our being through Jesus Christ. We're somebody. We're an eternal being. Okay, I'll carry on. Amen. Uh, in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we also are his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought we heard Brother Scott say ought a while ago when he got service started. Remember that? Uh, we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone graven by art by man's device. And the times of this ignorant God winked at. In other words, he said, okay, okay, okay. But come to time, things are going to have to change. There's coming a time things are going to have to change. It's called, there's coming a time that an individual needs to be born again and things have to change. It's called repent. Stop doing what's wrong. Start doing what's right. Yeah. Amen. He said, <clears throat> uh, by man's device, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Verse 31 says, because <clears throat> all this passage, uh, he made all things. Uh, don't dwell in, in a place that man has made. I don't need anything, blah, 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 so forth. And I don't mean any disrespect. As I've said already, because he hath appointed a day. There's coming a time, there's a day of judgment. Things are going to come to an end, a certain way of looking at it. He said, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world. Anybody want to be here when he does that? No. It's an appointed time. 
He's given us information prior here to, to, uh, to what he's saying right here in verse 31. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. We have assurance whether you want to accept it or not. We have assurance whether you want to believe it or not. We have assurance that what God has said in motion and have appointed, that we have assurance. That the one he raised from the dead, he's going to be in a position of being a judge and make things right. We have that assurance. Don't be so concerned about the outcomes in life. I said, so concerned. Be concerned. Pray. Be diligent about respect and responsibility. But don't be so concerned and wrapped up that you miss the point of who God is and what he's able to do. He brings life and deliverance, peace and joy, and victory through Jesus Christ. It's called salvation. It's called the gospel. It's referred to as various things. Simply put, whosoever will, let them come. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. A simple process, a simple uh, decision in a moment's time. From that time forward and afterwards, need to trust him, believe him, grow in the grace and nurture and admonition of the Lord. All right, turn with me to uh, Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. My darling wife shared this with me this morning, and it has inspired me to share it with you tonight. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hebrews 13. God don't need us. Oh, we're in his plan. There's an appointed time, appointed plan, so forth, and so on, that we're involved in. But it's not that he needs us. He gives us opportunity and privilege to choose. If he needed us, he would grab us and make us do something. Right. Amen. If you need something, don't you initiate some kind of determined effort to make sure that you get what you need? I said need, not want. Yeah. God don't need us. I'm not trying to be ugly or insensitive, but we definitely need him. Hallelujah. And he's provided and he's appointed a certain individual, Jesus Christ, to be a judge, set things in order, that we might have that assurance. Anybody have any assurance in our government? Anybody have an assurance in China? Gorbachev? What about the person down the street? Not that we're trying to be disrespectful, but this is what the world offers. Very little hope. If we had hope in this life only, we would be of all men most miserable. So we need to look to another source. Okay. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him, Jesus Christ, therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise. Whenever you think of sacrifice, you kind of think, well, it's going to mess up my schedule. It's going to mess up my plans. And things along that line. And we understand that. I'm not trying to be ugly about sacrifice. But we understand what sacrifice is. He says to offer a sacrifice of praise. Let me ask you a question. Do you always feel like praising God? Are you always in a posi position to do it? it is, is it always user friendly? There's various things that we choose not to praise God now. I'll wait. Uh, yeah. There's other things we choose to do to interrupt. He says, sacrifice. Lay it down. Turn off such and such. Wait on the hamburger. I'm just giving examples of sacrifice because we understand sacrifice. You initiate effort in, in, in someone else's purpose or plan and put ours on hold. Some sacrifices are pretty severe. Anybody uh, fast 40 days before? I know of a couple people. You do too. You may not know them, but I know you know them if I told you who they were. Fasted 40 days. Sacrifice. Okay, I'll carry on. 
Uh, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. Now, that doesn't mean that every time we're going to praise God, that it's going to be, oh, i got to sing Amazing Grace. Oh, i got to sing. It doesn't mean that at all. It means you choose outside of your schedule and plans to love God and honor God and praise Him, glorify Him. You know why? Because of that passage we read earlier. We need Him. We need to be connected with Him. We need to honor Him and glorify Him and serve Him. And that's a good thing. It really, really is. You know, He owns us. We don't own us, own ourselves anymore. If He owns us, guess what He's going to do? He's going to take care of us. Amen. If we have our head on straight and all the bolts are tightened down real good, when we obtain something, we take care of it, especially if it's special. Anybody have anything that's special that you're taking care of? Well, yeah. Almost finished. A sacrifice of praise to God continually. That means today, tomorrow, the next day, the day after that. Amen. Don't let one day go by without praising Him, thanking Him, glorifying His name, whether you sing or not, whether you jump up or down or not, whether you get loud or not, whatever the case may be. From your heart, offer praise and worship in the Spirit unto His precious holy name. There's a reason why. He's the creator. We're the created. He don't need us. We need him. We need to stay on good terms with him. And it's not that he's up there waiting to see until we goof up, kind of like what Sister Wanda was talking about a while ago. He's not doing that. He's waiting patiently because he, have, he has his son right beside him saying, Father, I'm the advocate. I'm the mediator. That's this and that and thus and so. And the judge is patiently. For by grace, we're in the grace dispensation. God is very gracious. I'll need to move on. It says, uh, praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Frequently, a whole bunch. Continue to give God praise and thanksgiving. You'll not regret it. Amen. Try your best to really mean it when you say it. Try your best to have your mind on what you're saying, why you're saying it. Anybody talk and have your mind on something else? We know how to do that. Don't do that with God. <laughs> Amen. Be focused on Him. Trust in Him. Have confidence in Him. Amen. Uh, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. But to do good, listen to this, and to communicate, fellowship, give, support, and bless, forget not. How do you keep from forgetting something? You make a note. You make a check. You put a sticky on the fridge. Or how are that you do it? That's how we make sure that we don't forget. Sometimes that don't work. Nine stickies on the refrigerator walk right by. Sometimes it don't work. But we need to make effort not to forget. Not to forget what? He's saying right here, do good. He just got through talking about praising God and giving Him thanks. Do good and communicate. Forget not. For with such sacrifice, it's going to take effort to make sure and make up your mind and do what God is saying to do. Aren't we supposed to do what he says to do? Yeah. Be a doer, not a hearer only. Uh, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. My, my, my. I want to please him. I want to please him more than just getting by. Amen. I want to honor him and glorify him and serve him faithfully. I appreciate when I ask him, Father, would you forgive me? i done wrong. He forgives me. He doesn't deliberate and try to figure out, well, that on a scale of 1 to 10, that was a 9, you know. I'm going to have to come up with a lot of mercy to take care of this. He don't do that like some do. He forgives us. Amen. He forgives us in that moment when we ask him, Father, would you forgive me? He forgives us. But what is he expecting? He expects us not to do that anymore. He told a woman, go and sin no more. That's still the mindset of God's purpose and plan. He says right here, uh, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Let's stay in a position to be convinced that we need him. Never get to the place, well, I don't need God today. I'm going to go out and do my own thing. Remember what I preached about this morning? Intended to build a tower. Got out there, got started, and didn't have what he needed to finish, and everybody mocked him. Know ahead of time. Plan ahead of time. Trust ahead of time. Pray ahead of time. Worship and praise Him ahead of time. Amen. Praise be to God Almighty. The Word of God is true. It's powerful. It's rich. It's good. Amen. I love the Word of God. It's really something else. It wasn't until long about 
uh, 1980-ish, got saved in 69, was called to preach in 77. It wasn't until about 1980 that this was turned on in me. I'm telling you, turned on. It's life, it's joy, and all I can do is think about it and talk about it and worship about it and all these kind of things. Anybody says anything about the Word of God, I'm tuned in. About church, I'm tuned in. Whether they're on good terms with God or not, I'm going to pay attention. And if I need to correct them, I'll say, that's just not right. The Scripture says this, this, this. Amen. Love the Word of God. Love Him. Sacrifice a praise unto Him. That means any time and every time. Forget your schedule. I'm not saying be irresponsible. I'm saying in the moment. Forget it. From time to time, the Spirit, doesn't He say, sing? Doesn't He say, thank, thank the Lord? Doesn't He say, say things like that? Then right after that, the devil says, no, you don't need to do that. You can wait till later. You already did that this morning. Don't forget. <clears throat> Guess what? We have a choice with one or the other. The Scripture says, sacrifice. In the midst of the battle, oh, don't, oh, don't, oh, don't, oh, don't. In the midst of that time, sacrifice. You know what we're used to? Especially once we got born again, we're used to being carnal. We're used to that. And it takes a while to get away from that way of thinking. Trust and believe in. Anyone need prayer tonight? You have a particular need you'd like the church to pray with you about?